Hello, I am Wanderer001, and I bring you a review five months in the making of the Drobo 5N network attached storage device for home and small business. It is a NAS solution for, just like I said, small business or home use. What I'll do is I'll show you what came in the box with the Drobo 5N first, and then start talking about the device itself. So what we do is move this over here for a moment. All right, what you get in the box is a six foot cat five cable. I had an extra cat six cable lying around that was the same length as this, so I never bothered using this or opening it. You get your power brick. Now for the power supply that's supplied to the Drobo, this is actually a really small, nice size power brick. It does have L-shaped plug, which I thought was kind of odd, but it, it saves on space in the setup that I have, so it's not that bad. Like I said, power brick, nice size. Other part of the power brick, you have your actual plug. And there is a quick start manual, which is still in the box because the box is living in the basement at the moment. So last bit is Drobo bag. Uh, it, it, it's kind of like one of those shopping bags that you would get from your grocery store. So it, it's a nice touch. It was over the Drobo, folded nicely. It's only all wrinkly because I, like I said, this was a review five months in the making. So this ended up being used and stored away. Uh, they used to give you like a tea cozy that was used to cover the Drobo. You don't actually use this to cover the Drobo, but it was covered in the box with this. Uh, they used to use a tea cozy, like I said, which had no other use aside from if you covered up your Drobo to keep the dust off of it. This actually has a use, but this is not a review of a bag. This is a review of the Drobo 5N. So we will bring the Drobo back and let's get started talking about the Drobo. It is 5.9 inches in width. So that's across the front here. It is 7.3 inches in height and it has a depth, turn it sideways so you get that, depth of 10.3 inches. It also has a empty weight of 8.5. So empty is if we swing it around to the front again and pop that off. Empty weight is minus the drives, which, which are sold separately. So it is not a light device. It is, it is a heavier device, but that's okay. You're not really going to be propping this up on a shelf somewhere depends on your setup. Normally I like to show you what a everyday object would look like in comparison so that you get a size comparison because sometimes just saying numbers isn't good enough. The only thing that I could think of that was close to the size of this was a toaster. So you're looking at your Drobo box being about the size of your standard toaster. Um, sideways, so a depth comparison, it's pretty much going to be a toaster. All right, a little more general basic information. It does come with a two-year standard warranty. You can extend that to a three-year uh, enhanced support with the uh, Drobo. You do have to register your device within the first 30 days. If you don't do that, then you don't get the two-year standard warranty. I didn't do that. I haven't had any problems with the Drobo, but should have registered it within the first 30 days of uh, actually getting it. I got this back in December. It is currently April, almost May. Uh, so yeah, if somebody from Drobo sees this, hey, help me out. It is compatible with uh, many different operating systems, including Mac OS X 10.7 or higher, Windows 8 slash 8.1, 32N 64-bit, as well as Windows 7 32 or 64-bit. So pretty much any computer that's running right now, you should be able to utilize this device with. So let me take you on a quick tour of the Drobo 5N itself. You are currently looking at the front end. As you can see, you do see my camcorder reflected in the shiny plastic front here. It is a fingerprint magnet, but if you set this up and you're not going to be messing with it too much, you're gonna be okay with the fingerprints, not a big deal. On the front here, the Drobo has a magnetic plastic cover which hides all the drive bays. 
You have five bays in this particular unit which take both SSD as well as your standard platter drives. Currently I have two standard platter drives in here. You can load up the entire Drobo with SSDs. However, you're looking at a trade-off of faster read-write speeds with capacity. You're not going to have a you know, six terabyte drive in an SSD, at least at the time of the filming of this particular uh, video. You will, however, have six terabyte platter drives. You can mix and match, too. You can have some SSD as well as platter. You will always need two of either type. So just to get this Drobo running, I needed two drives in order to start using the Drobo. If I had an SSD, I would need two SSDs, two platters, or vice versa. Let me show you what it's like putting hard drives into the Drobo. It's very simple and not that difficult to do. Looking at the front with the cover off, we can see the five bays, which take 3.5 SATA 2 or SATA 3 drives. They include SSD or your standard platter drives. Uh, as you can see here, uh, I have a Western Digital Red 3 terabyte drive. Uh, I'll have two of these because the Drobo does need two in order to operate, but just to demonstrate how they go into the Drobo, you can choose any one of the bays. It uh, doesn't matter. Uh, you grab the gray tab here, pull it to the side to make it easier for yourself. So, gray tab. Then the drive just slides in and you will hear a click as it connects to the pins in the back. It's as simple as that. You load up your drives and you're good to go. If you want to remove the drive or do the hot swappable feature, all you have to do is click the tab and the drive just slides on out. What I neglected to mention when I showed you how easy it was to put the hard drives into the Drobo itself, I forgot to mention that it is a toolless system. If you noticed, I didn't have to rack up or mount the hard drives to a shelf before I put them into the unit. I just took the standard hard drive, put it into the Drobo, and I was set to go. Other NAS uh, solutions that you may be looking at require you to mount up the drives to a rack before you can put it in, or tray, I should say, before you put it into the Drobo. You also uh, cannot run different types of hard drives with other NAS solutions. Other NAS, you have to have all the same type of uh, hard drive, so manufacturer, and you also have to have same speed and same capacity. Drobo, you don't have to worry about that. While I opted to have two of the same type and size drives, this one could have been a Western Digital Green one terabyte drive. This one could have been a Seagate 750 gigabyte drive. Now, I chose a particular methodology with my drives only because I wanted to have a good idea of how much space I would have so I have the two three terabyte drives which should give me six terabytes of usable space but because of Drobo's redundancy you take that number and half it so I have roughly a little less than three because there's some overhead which I'll show you later when I show you the Drobo dashboard. Now we're gonna go back to the front cover here because I did not show you the back of it, which pretty much tells you all the information you need to know about the Drobo. So if these aren't on at the moment, these are LED lights and they're color coded, they're color coded to the back. Green is everything is good. Yellow is, hey, you need to pay attention, put something here, which would generally be once I fill these up, it's going to ask me to put another drive in. Blinking yellow green means don't remove the drive. It's generally because it's writing information, rebuilding your stack if you put another drive in. Red indicates put a drive here because this is the smallest one and you need to replace it because you've filled up the other five bays. Uh, red blinking means, hey, the drive has failed, replace immediately. Now, what you're also gonna notice is, if I turn this slightly, because there is a giant fan on the back of the Drobo, which I'll be showing you momentarily, it is important that the front cover be perforated so that air has a way to move through the device to help keep it cool. Uh, I'll take you to the side here. It has a nice matte finish. This is a aluminum casing. Both sides are exactly the same. Around the back, you have your connectivity, your single gigabit ethernet port, 
your power switch and your perforated aluminum backing with fan. The operational noise for this unit is listed at being 24 decibels. Uh, I did my own tests. I'll, this side has a little more room. I'll show you here. I'll show you what I got using a phone app. It has a plus or minus five degrees of uh, degradation based on the app creator's own emissions for my particular device. So as you can see, I was getting around 50 to 51 decibels with the five uh, decibel deg degradation. You're looking at about 45 to 50. Now that's not just the fan noise, that's actually the hard drives running in the unit as well. So the more hard drives you have, the more noise it'll make. It wasn't terribly noticeable. In a completely quiet house, you will hear them, however, if you have the TV on, the air conditioner running, or if you have, like me, downstairs neighbors with a kick and sound system that rattles your floor, you won't hear this, so don't worry about it. Now, part of the reason uh, you might be considering the Drobo, like I am, is you want the Ethernet port because you want to have as fast data transfer speeds as you can. There are two ways to hook up your Drobo. You can either hook it directly to the network by connecting it to your wireless Wi-Fi router, or you can take the Ethernet cable, connect it directly to your Drobo to the computer. Now, I was hesitant to run read-write speeds on the Drobo only because there are so many variables that you might not realize with uh, something like that. In the case of how many hard drives you have in, what types of hard drives, you know, read-write speeds, as well as the type of Wi-Fi router that you have. If you have a lower-end Wi-Fi router like I do, I don't have gigabit ports on the back of the router, so if I connect to the Wi-Fi router, I get slower uh, rewrite speeds. For instance, I utilized the same 1.5 gigabyte file and transferred it from my computer over the Wi-Fi network to the Drobo and directly connected from my computer to the Drobo. The write speed over Wi-Fi was 6.8 megabits per second for a 1.5 gigabyte file. Now, I ran that test several times, and because the amount of items that you have attached to your Wi-Fi network determine your speeds, I was getting 6.8 was my maximum, while I would drop out to 3.5 in some instances. Now, when I ran the same test hardline to the Drobo, I was getting 43 megabits per second for the 1.5 gigabyte file, because it took care of the file like that. It was done in a flash. I decided to do a longer test. I grabbed a... 120 gigabyte uh, backup image to put onto the Drobo, and I got up to about 68 megabits, which is a much better speed if you're hardlining. Now, not all NAS solutions let you do that, so that is a benefit of the Drobo, being able to directly connect. Moving on to the bottom of the Drobo, obviously you have, which are kind of dusty right now, um, your four rubberized feet, as well as you'll notice this little drawer. What this little drawer is, again, tool is designed, just flip a switch, open it up. This is your M SATA port. So what this does, this allows you to add industry standard M SATA, so a solid state hard drive that you'd normally find in a uh, netbook or smaller laptop device, will allow you to add a solid state hard drive to the Drobo to increase your read speeds. So let's say you load up the front with just platter-based hard drives for maximum capacity. Well, you're gonna have a slower read speed than if they were all SSDs. You add your mSATA drive down here and you're gonna get faster read speeds. Now, as you can see, I don't have an mSATA drive in here at the moment. Uh, I will be getting one in the future, but I just didn't have the money at the time. So uh, I cannot tell you if the read speeds increased but once I do get one, I will do a subsequent video to let you know if you're interested. Let me know in the comments if you are. Um, again, so mSATA will help you maximize the read speed if you went with a fully platter-based hard drive uh, solution. Another item that I was reluctant to talk about was power consumption. Again, this is another variable item based on the amount of drives that you have in the device as well as what type of uh, drives you have in the device. In my case with the two Western Digital Red drives and no mSATA drive in the bottom, I can get idling power so it's just sitting there, the drives are spinning, not doing anything. 21 through 23 watts. If I'm writing to the drive, it's 23 through 24 watts. 
If I'm reading from the drive, it's about 22 watts. Again, varies slightly depending on how many people are accessing the drive. When it's powered off, so completely turned off, the Drobo, the drives are not spinning, it still utilizes 3.6 to 2.5 watts. Now, part of that is because, something I didn't mention before, there is the internal battery in this, which is one of the reasons I waited for this particular model. I was going to jump on the Drobo FS a long time ago, but I wanted that battery power backup. Not really a backup, but what it does is if you have a power failure and you're moving items to the Drobo, the battery inside the Drobo will last long enough that anything that's being transferred won't get lost. It'll finish what it's doing and then power itself down. I didn't want to test, you know, unplugging it or simulating a power outage, so just going to have to take Drobo's word for that. Now, what I did forget to mention about the front cover here is it is magnetized. Uh, you don't have to worry because some people might be a little leery about having magnets that close to hard drives. Don't worry, they're not powerful enough to do any damage to your hard drives, as well as there is a lip around here and here, which the magnets are affixing themselves to, so they're not going to be by your hard drives at all. So I suppose with all the general information out of the way, I should talk more about my personal experiences with the Drobo. Like I said, I've had it for five months now. I've been using it. Uh, it is a network attached storage device and made to be on all the time. You're going to be either using it for media streaming, putting your backups onto it, things of that nature. I don't leave it on all the time. There are some weeks, you know, i probably say two when I first got it, there was a two to three week gap when I would power it down, power it back on. Didn't have any problems, um, haven't any real issues with it. Sometimes when I would turn it back on, I would have to hold the power switch up to give the drives a chance to spin up. And then I would just use the Drobo dashboard to power it down. The main reason I went with the Drobo 5N was while I am a tech guy, I've never been good at networking. The Drobo pretty much is self-sufficient. It does everything for you. You don't have to know how to find and connect to an IP address. You don't have to know how to uh, mount shares or drives to your network. Drobo does all of that for you. With that said, yes, it was a s simple uh, plug and play start. However, not quite as fast as some of the videos that I've seen from Drobo that they put out as promotional information. Like, I think they said you can get it up and running in between five to 15 minutes. Uh, there was one video I saw that they said, you know, hey, Drobo will set itself up in the time it takes to toast a bagel. Uh, not quite that simple, at least, let me rephrase that, not quite that fast, at least with my experience. Let me show you what setup was like for me. Now, keep in mind, these videos are not going to be as nice as this one might be because those were more of a Canon thing. I was setting up the Drobo, not really aiming to film, but I figured why not film some of it. And that, this is what that looked like. So this is what happened when I first turned on the Drobo with a three terabyte, I'm sorry, two three terabyte hard drives. It appears that we have run into an error. Uh, so I'm probably going to have to update the firmware. That'll probably take care of it, but uh, we'll find out. After I got the red lights, I went to the Drobo dashboard, and it said it was initializing. Then after initializing, I noticed that the Drobo turned itself off, and then I came back with these green lights, indicating that drive health is supposed to be good, and these lights down here, which are how much space is left and there we saw it just decided to uh, flash itself on and off again so we're gonna let it do this for a little bit and I'll take a look and see what's uh, happening alright so here we have it booted itself off again and now we have the green lights on the side off and the blue light on the bottom is progressing which is what it did when I first turned it on and got the red lights because of I'm going to assume a firmware issue. I haven't been able to check 
Uh, the Drobo dashboard has not picked up the Drobo on the network as of yet. So when the blue lights finish up, I'll check the dashboard, see if it picks it up. I'll see if it updated to the latest firmware. The current latest firmware for the Drobo 5N is 3.1. Right now this one is on 3.0. So that's mini update 2. 3? I'm not sure which one I'm up to now. Alright, so we've got the lights are indicating green on the side here, which means that these should be readable because green is uh, green is go. However, we don't have on the bottom here yet the blue lights which indicate capacity. So I'm going to pause the video for a moment, take a look at the, uh, the dashboard and see what's going on. So after the Drobo booted on and off a couple of times, I'm assuming uh, updating the firmware, it brought, I was logged into the Drobo dashboard. Here we can see the health of the Drobo is green and we're a go. Before that was a red light and a red lock. Uh, so this is the only Drobo I have on the network. So if we click into it, I should be able to come over and check the tools, which will show me if it has the latest firmware. Now I'm not sure uh, because down here, software updates, what I'll do is I'll run and make sure that the Drobo is up to date and then start the video up again and let you know what happens. All right, so once again, I checked to make sure that the firmware on both the Drobo dashboard and Drobo itself were up to date and it was a go. So the next thing I went to check out was the capacity and I see that connecting to the Drobo device, I checked up here for the it's connecting. Uh, a moment ago it said that it was still updating. Uh, I don't have any shares set up at the moment, but it's still connecting and will take a moment. So we're just going to leave the Drobo alone, uh, let it do what it needs to do, and I'll come back to the Dash or the Drobo as needed. After Drobo finished formatting itself and became up and running, I went to the capacity area just to check. As I stated before, there are, there are two 3 terabyte drives and you can see because of the redundancy, the actual capacity that's available is only 2.69 terabytes with 384 megabytes being used for the Drobo software. If we come over here to the usage, we can see available to use is 2 terabytes, 2.6 terabytes, and used for protection is 2.75. By default, you get one share. In this case, it labeled it Z public. I'll be, <clears throat> I'll be going through and adding more shares. But in order to do that, I first have to set up a admin account and then start divvying out permissions from there. I will either cover that in another video or in this video, depending on how long it ends up being. Now, when all was said and done, that setup actually took me about an hour. Yes, I have an older Wi-Fi router. Yes, I have. Um, yes, I had to update the firmware in both the dashboard and the Drobo, but that was definitely longer than the five to fifteen minutes advertised. Was it simple? Yes, I did have to just plug it in, download the dashboard, and let the updates happen. But I will admit, getting on the thirty-minute mark, I was getting a little concerned and your everyday user might be a little put back by that. If you advertise the device as being something that's really easy to use, simple to use, and you run into that time wall, not everybody's going to be willing to put in that amount of time. I was. I'm happy that I did, but that might be a little disconcerting to some people, so I'm just putting that out there. It is simple to do if you're patient and let the Drobo do what it needs to do. Talk to your network, talk to the dashboard, update itself, power down, reboot, cycle. Just be patient and it will, it will do what it needs to do. Now, another reason you're considering this particular Drobo model, not only is it because it's the network attached storage model, uh, most Wi-Fi routers that are newer, you can just you know grab your uh, USB 3.0 and hardline it directly into the Wi-Fi router that way. But if you choose that particular model Drobo, you're not going to have access to the Drobo apps. Now, for home and small business use, the Drobo 5N is the only model that has the Drobo app. There are business model 8-bay drive arrays that have apps, but 
This is the, the one for small business, the 5N. Currently, the App Store only has 19 apps. However, when it first launched, there was only one or two. Right now, what I have installed on this particular Drobo is just the Plex app for a multimedia server and copy. There are some other ones that I'm thinking about putting on here, but during my testing period, those are the two apps that I was using on the Drobo. I've been throwing a lot of information at you and I'm just gonna throw a little bit more at you. Um, general pros and cons, because yes, with any product or device, there are going to be both pros and cons. You have to decide for yourself if the pros outweigh the cons for what you want to do. One of the major cons for the Drobo, not just the Drobo 5M, but for Drobo in general, you are buying into the Drobo universe. This is one of the reasons I was hesitant for a while about picking one of these up. Yes, you have expandable storage, up to currently I believe it's 10 terabytes, and that's after you install for a 12, 16, 20, and then it halves it for the redundancy, you'll have 10 terabytes of information that you can use. Or you can do dual disk redundancy, which is something I didn't mention before. So single disk, if this guy fails, all the information is still on this one. If you have dual disk, you can have two drive failures. Obviously, you would need two more disks or a disk that is large enough to hold the capacity of both of these. You're always going to be uh, thinking about the lowest capacity disk. So if you have one that's large enough to take both, to carry both of them, you're okay. But, like I said, you are going to be tied into the Drobo universe. There is no taking out one of these hard drives and plugging it into a hard drive toaster and reading the information off of the drive. It's going to be encoded with Drobo's proprietary system. That's part of what you're buying into with the ease of the, the Drobo itself. Likewise, if you have a drive failure, you can replace the drive easily. However, if you have a Drobo failure, then your hard drives could be in danger. Let me explain. With other Drobo devices that aren't the network attached storage device, the 5N and the previous model, the 5S, so anything that's uh, FireWire or USB connected to your computer, you can move the hard drives to a new Drobo and it will read the drives as if it was the original Drobo. With the 5N, in my research, I found that the only way that you can move the drives is to have a, another set of drives, have them in another, another Drobo, copy the information from one Drobo 5N to the other Drobo 5N, and that's how you would copy or backup or move your information. The thing with the Drobo 5N, as soon as you put in a hard drive, it formats it so any, any data that's on it gets erased. A little disconcerting for me, but I wasn't gonna let it be a deal breaker, so it's just something for you to consider. You're gonna be, you're buying into the system, and to be completely safe, you should have your, your primary important data elsewhere. Remember, Drobo is just part of your entire backup solution on-site, off-site, and cloud for important documents. With that said about having a possible secondary Drobo to back up your original Drobo in case of Drobo failure, let's talk about the price. The price of the unit, it, it can be kind of expensive. The base price, at least when I was, when I got it, I got it in like a lightning deal, it was a special sale. I got the Drobo itself without any of the drives for like 484. Normally, I believe it's about 500. Western Digital Drives, I got them 130 a piece. They're regularly 179. So you're looking at to fill this up without even the the M SATA drive at the bottom. You're looking at almost 1500 over 1500 dollars, 1500 for the entire box system. It's a nice system. There are others out there that are more expensive, but it price is a concern, just keep that in mind. You're gonna be buying a box and then you have to buy the hard drive separately. The hard drives are nice to buy separately because you can grow your storage as needed. You do have to start off with two, but you don't have to load up all the bays at the onset knowing how much storage you want to have. Now, those are just, those are a few cons, nothing to be too concerned about, but 
it's it's important that you have as much data as you can when making a decision to purchase something like this. One item that I didn't touch on and was not able to test because I did not want to blank out a disk or pop out a disk to rewrite the information was the rebuild times. One of the things that I was reading about this, the rebuild times can be kind of long, anywhere from 24 to 36 hours, depending on how many drives, how much information you have on here. So let's talk some pro. I'll throw ease of use in here again because you don't have to know networking. The Drobo will take care of all the networking for you. Trailless design for the, uh, the hard drives, slipping them in and out as needed. Hot swappable, so if it's on, take it out. Don't have to worry about losing data. Put new hard drive in or put another hard drive in. You're good to go. Expandable space is important. Like I said, I only have two three terabyte drives in here now, but as my media library grows, because now I'm actually ripping DVDs to add to my media library, I will need more storage. I can purchase a single disc, or I can purchase two. They can be any size, doesn't matter. Any brand, doesn't have to match. That's a plus. The battery inside the unit is another plus, letting you finish off that data if you happen to have a power outage. One other benefit is multi-computer access. You can have several computers accessing the Drobo at the same time. You can access information even if the Drobo is rebuilding its stack or writing to the drive. I know I've thrown a lot of information at you, and this is a very long video, which is why the Drobo dashboard I'll link to here. I'll make another video just for that. It'll also show you the Drobo turned on and the lights on the front. Now, you can't see it very well here, but when I show you the Drobo dashboard, I'll show you what that looks like as well. All in all, I've been happy with my purchase. Yes, it was a bit expensive, expensive, depending on what you consider expensive, and the idea of possibly needing a second Drobo to back this one up, still a little off-putting, but I am happy with the decision that I've made. Like I said, five months into this, I haven't had any problems, all has been well, and I haven't really had to do much of anything to keep this up. Turn it on, go to the dashboard, do what I need to do. So, my suggestion is, if you're considering it, take all the information that I've given you into consideration and make your own choice. Personally, I took the leap, I bought the Drobo 5N, and I'm happy with it. You may or may not be. You can only make that decision for yourself. There have been other products where I've said, yes, I like this product. I think you should like it. Go out and buy it if you were thinking about it. This is a, a little different. It suits my needs. It might not suit your needs. But as of right now, if you're considering it and you're on the fence, I might take that plunge and, and buy the Drobo 5N. I've been Wanderer 001. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, Leave them in the area below. I will do my best to answer your question or at least find out what the answer is to your question. If you have any requests for additional video footage of the Drobo, let me know in the comments area below. Again, thanks for watching.